Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a tutorial to share with you today. We are going to be making mini hats for our peg dolls inspired by the book Making Peg Dolls by Margaret Bloom. This book has so many projects. It is really beautifully laid out and we have gotten a ton of inspiration from this book. So the project today are these little hats from the Martinmas project and I have altered the pattern a little bit but I do encourage you to check out the book with the pattern that comes in the book as well as all of the other projects. Today I'm going to be using two sets of needles. I have a size 5 knitting needles and I also have a pair of size 7 knitting needles and you're going to be needing different sizes depending on the weight of your yarn. I have a couple of different yarns here to share with you. This first one is kind of coarse and fine. It's about sock weight and it's by Wild in the Woods. The next two yarns are by Cloudborn. They are a sport weight so a little bit heavier than the sock weight and for this one you're going to need a size 5 needle but I'm actually going to start off using a size size 7 needle to do the hat. I'm going to come in again and use the size 5 needles. Then we're going to use different weights of yarn and you're going to see that you're going to get a variety of sizes by the time you're done using these different weights and these different size needles. So I'm going to show you how to cast on. So I'm going to make a loop. So I'm taking the yarn between my fingers and I'm going to do just a little loop here and I'm making it a little bit smaller so that it fits onto my needle. So I'm going to take you through this step by step. Even if you're a brand new knitter, I think that you'll have success with this project. So we're going to make that snug around our knitting needle, but we don't want it too tight. We have loose knitters and tight knitters, and we want to find some place right in the middle. If you're a really tight knitter, you're going to end up making a smaller hat. And if you're a loose knitter, it will be slightly larger. So we're going to cast on and there are many different ways to cast on. I am just teaching you one method that I am familiar with where you are taking the yarn from the left side over your thumb and then you're bringing it over to the right side over your finger. So let's do that again. So you need to loop from one side to the other. Uh, go ahead and practice with your knitting project a few times. If you are unsure about this, you want to make sure that you're casting on correctly. And we have casted on 15 stitches. And you can count them by twos. And once you have 15, we're going to start out pretty simply by knitting the first two rows. You want to make sure that you're knitting with your yarn and not your tail. The tail for this one is pretty long, about six to eight inches. And it's okay for it to be that length because we're going to use it to sew up the hat, or you can just use it to bring that yarn into your hat and hide the tail. So to knit, again, there are many different ways and techniques to do this. I am using one that I am familiar with, so I'm going to take the needle in my right hand and then pull it through the yarn in the left needle and wrap the yarn around it. And then we're going to pull that through and that's going to just create a simple stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing exactly the same on the other side so that we are going to be knitting two rows in addition to the row that we cast it on. Now when I'm casting on sometimes I end up making it a little bit tighter than the rest of my knitting because that's the part that's going to be on the rim of the hat and I want that to be a little bit more snug so that it almost hugs the peg doll but that's just a personal preference. Now it's really important that you are knitting correctly and you're not splitting your yarn and that you're going into the correct spot. Because I'm a fairly novice knitter, I have to live with my mistakes rather than correct them. But if you have made a really big error, you may need to unknit until you get to that point where you made a mistake so that you do not end up with any drop stitches or uh, additional stitches. Now comes the fun part. We're going to be knitting two together, then you're going to knit one, and you're going to do this for the entire row. So getting two stitches onto your needle for one stitch is a little bit challenging if you are a tight knitter. So it's really important that you are right in the middle, even a little bit looser of a knitter is going to make this process a little bit easier. And you want to pay attention. On a lot of occasions, I have 
just gotten back into just knitting and I've forgotten to knit two together. But because this is such a simple, easy project, it's really forgiving. And if you accidentally forget to knit two together, I would just keep going rather than go back because it's for a peg doll. So we're going to continue knitting two stitches together and then one stitch. And we're going to do this for the entire row. And again, if you're a new knitter, you're going to have to pay attention and count and make sure that you are not missing any stitches. And if you're experienced, you could probably do this with your eyes closed. So we're going to do the last stitch and then we're going to do another row, but this time we're just going to do regular knitting. I'm going to count them up and I've got 10 stitches. And now we just want to knit this row regularly without knitting uh, any two stitches together. So when you're knitting two stitches together, you are decreasing and you are making your uh, project more narrow. Okay, so now we get to do the fun part again, and that is to knit down or to decrease our stitches. So this time we're gonna knit one and then we're gonna knit two together. You can find the entire pattern on the blog post that accompanies this video. You can find that link down in the description box below. And I'm offering you three different patterns that are really similar, but they are each a little bit different in that in one of them you cast on 15 stitches and another one you cast on 17 stitches, which will give you slightly larger hat. And also if you're using a bulkier yarn, like a worsted weight, then you're going to end up with a larger hat anyway. So I would offer you to play around with your knitting a little bit, as well as your peg dolls until you find something that works. So we're down to seven stitches, and now we're going to knit one and then two together. So every time we've decreased, we've also added just a regular knit row in between. We do that all the way until we get down to just five stitches. So at this point, we're going to decrease, and you're going to see that now we've ended up with just five stitches. So this is going to be the last time that we are decreasing and we're going to knit two together and then knit one. Now at this point, if you want your hat to be a little bit more pointy and a little bit bigger, you can add an additional row of just knitting at this point and an additional row at the end. So now we're down to just three stitches and it's time for us to bind off. Now if you want yours a little bit taller, you can give yourself an extra row right here. And you can also find those patterns on the blog post that accompanies this video. So we, we're knitting two stitches. Then we're going to take that first stitch and slip it over the second stitch. And that way it's going to be nice and bind it off. And now we're going to do the same with the last stitch. We're going to knit so there's always two. And then you're going to slip that first one over that second one until you're just down to one loop. You're going to gently remove your knitting needle, cut yourself a tail of about six inches, and then you're going to slip that tail into your loop. And that way we can tie that off. And you just want to pull that nice and snug. And you can see that you end up with a nice little triangle in the end. Now, depending on how you sew this, you can leave that little top part out so that it's a little bit more pointy. I'm going to try to tuck it in a little bit. So I'm using a needle that is quite large. It's for yarn. It has a large eye and this one happens to have a pointy tip, but you can also find them with a blunt tip as well. So I'm not going to worry about trying to get through my loops from my knitting. I'm just going to sew this right through, but you do want to make sure that you are sewing through enough of the yarn so that it doesn't split the yarn and leave an opening in the back. So I'm just going to fold this in half and begin stitching up the sides. I'm not worried about stitching from the inside and then flipping the whole thing right side out. I am just going to stitch it up on the outside. You're not going to hardly tell at all. And again, this is for a little peg doll. So I feel like we can take those liberties. So I'm just going to sew down the edge. So you want to make sure that you have enough of a tail. So do be generous with this. It's going to make it a lot easier, not just to sew, but also to tie it off. And then that little excess, we're just going to weave it back into the hat. 
So we're going to go all the way to the very end to the original tail that we had at the beginning. So if your tail at the very end is too short, you can always use your tail from the beginning and sew it to the tip rather from the tip down. So at this point, you want to tie off your, your needle, your yarn. So you can just do one knot. You can do two if you'd like. And then we are going to take that needle and weave it back into our hat. And then we're going to trim it off. And that just gives you a nicer, cleaner look in the end. And of course, we have that original tail here. And I am going to do the same thing with that tail as I did with the other piece. I'm going to first thread my needle. And this is just one technique that I learned at a Waldorf conference recently. And I'm sorry that I'm a little bit off camera for, for you to see how I did that. And now that it is on our needle, I'm just going to weave that right through. Any spot is fine. Instead of just trimming it off right at the end, which would pose potentially a hazard if it came undone. This way it's less likely to come undone and it also gives you a nice neat little finished look. So we have three different size peg dolls. We have this mama peg doll here so you can see that the hat is quite large on her. We also have the uh, father or the male peg doll or just the unisex peg doll. This one I've used for all kinds of projects and you can see it fits just right. And then we have our finger puppets which has a bigger head and you can see that it still fits really well but it is a little bit smaller. Okay so we have three different size peg dolls. We also have three different size or weights of yarn. We can have our worsted weight, we can have our sports weight, and we can have our sock weight. And with each of them, you're going to get a slightly different size. And so if you want a larger size, you can use the larger of the three patterns that I'm sharing with you and the worsted weight yarn. So this is the worsted weight yarn, and you can see that it is a little bit more uh, bulky. And for those, I'm going to use the size seven needles. And you can see that these hats end up being a little bit bigger. I personally like the bigger hats, but I also like the flatter hats. I don't really care for the pointy hat. It just kind of depends on the project and what you like. And so I've made a lot of these. Now you can follow the same pattern and knit tightly and get a smaller hat. You can knit more loosely and get a larger hat. So there's quite a lot of flexibility considering these are really tiny hats and you have a lot of choices in your yarn and you have choices in your knitting needles. And of course, you have your own personal knitting style, which could be tighter or looser. So let's take a final look at these adorable little hats. I love the way they turned out. I think they add so much charm and character to the little peg dolls. They take between 10 and 15 minutes to make, which I think is pretty appropriate considering sometimes hair takes that long to make for the peg dolls as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check out the book called Making Peg Dolls by Margaret Bloom. You can find more information about that product as well as the other materials that we used for this project on my website at pepperandpine.com. The link to that blog post is down in the description box below. If you'd like to check out some of the other projects we have for peg dolls, you can tap on the screen right now. I also have a playlist of all the handwork projects we have done. You can also find those links down in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.